So this is the center oil. You'll see the face again. You've got the areas where you'd be checking the step wear. The worst level of step wear is normally located at the point opposite where your intake would normally be. So this is the extremely tiny um, EGI primary intake port. It's massively small compared to say the Renessa size port, but it's what works with these engines from factory. So you've got your primary intake port, obviously this is where your step wear would normally be worse. Um, so this is the place you want to be checking correctly with the correct kind of dial test indicator. Um, again, with most areas you'd be checking for wear. We will cover that with the front and rear iron, um, but other areas where you're going to be checking for wear. The iron can look good and there can be no damage to it, but sometimes it can be out of tolerance. Um, because for instance, you've got a low spot around this area. Um, where this seal travels. I'm not sure if it's very clear on the picture on the video. But yeah, this, this area here you want to be checking, especially we do find engines which have a low spot here, but here at say 12 o'clock position, there's not a problem. That's actually perfectly within tolerance. This is the front iron on the RX7FC EGI engine. In this area, when you're dismantling the engine, you want to be checking for step wear, um, which are normally this area here, where if you look closely, you've got a sort of an eye-shaped elliptical overlap. This area here some, sometimes can create some very serious step wear. Um, beyond a specific tolerance, again, a little is acceptable according to the manual, but beyond a specific tolerance, this area here is sometimes what can send an iron out of spec to be reused, even though everything else is in good shape. If you've got a side seal gone, for instance, you also want to check the top edges, so this one here and this one here, of the actual intake ports to make sure that there's no damage to those. Um, sometimes a side seal can sweep across when it's broken and actually start to bite away at this. In some cases, you can port it out, um, assuming it's within your porting templates area. Other than that, Obviously, the iron needs to be reused. You've got various other paths on these irons. Um, one is the eye, like I said, the elliptical eye shape. You'd want to be checking the, the wear depth on that. Um, and also, this area here um, where the oil control ring runs, this can sometimes wear quite low and it can be beyond tolerance, even though it looks nice and smooth. On a side note, a lot of this crap, this like nasty, muddy crap in the actual water passages, this is mostly indicative of the improper coolant to be used. In this case, we know the previous owner of this engine had used water in the, within the engine, and we're quite lucky when it's been pulled apart that we haven't found any severe sort of rusting or breakaway of the areas, for instance, on the back of where the, the water jackets live, which can cause water seal failure. It's just the load of sort of muddy crap that's going to be need to be cleaned out before the actual engine's then reassembled. So this is the center iron. This is the extremely tiny um, EGI primary intake port. So the front and rear iron, with regards to ports, this one here would be your secondary intake port. See, this is the front. There would be the same matching size port on the rear iron. And this is your tertiary intake port. Oh, this is a naturally aspirated second generation. So this would effectively be referred to as a six port engine. The turbo version of these, which was obviously released um, with a turbo, uh, of the FC actually has a four port setup, similar in style to the RX-7 FD. Um, so this tertiary port was not actually there, but the, the secondary port was actually slightly larger um, to make up for that 